Good morning, y'all. Wake up. I gotta wake up with you for real. All right. God bless y'all, man. God bless y'all. Day by day, little by love. Amen. One day at a time. Can't have daytime without nighttime. You gotta take the good to bed, you know? Um, anyway, <laughs> all glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Gotta give credit, honor, and glory to who is due. Amen. Uh, it is 7 7.37, Saturday, September 17th. Alright. <laughs> Need to get my mind right. Uh, where am I going to? I, I wrote a drunk yesterday. Mm, I guess I could read. I guess I could read it. I'll read this with y'all. Um, this drunk called uh, Do You Love or Hate the Lord? That's what the title is. I wrote this drunk yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to read it. Do You Love or Hate the Lord? Uh, what the title is. Do you love, do you love the Lord or do you hate the Lord? I'm sure most people will not admit that they hate the Lord, but by their actions, they show they do, or rather they love the Lord. Luke chapter six, uh, verse 46, Lord Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? John chapter 14, verse 15, Lord Jesus said, if you love me, what? He my commands. Most people claim to love God, but are not even keeping his word. So how can you love him or express your love for him? John 15 verses 4 through 5 and 7 through 10. Let me read this one. Bear with me. John chapter 15. If I can get that. John chapter 15, verses uh, 4 through 5. <clears throat> Lord Jesus said, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done. And it'll be done for you. You see? He said, unless you remain in me, how you do that? By standing in his word daily. Apart from me, apart from him, his word daily, you can do nothing. If you remain in me, his word daily, and... My words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish. That's what Lord Jesus said. If you keep if you keep my commands, his word daily, you will remain in his love. All right. Notice I said at first, do you love or hate the Lord? Not are you saved or not? Not do you believe or not? You can be saved and yet reject God's word. Leaving your walk, testimony and effectiveness. And, and your effectiveness and relationship with the Lord weak. <clears throat> you can be a believer and yet reject God's word, leaving your walk, testimony, and effectiveness and relationship with the Lord weak. That's why most people seem the way they seem normal as they do today. Um, Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 through 6, the Lord said, You shall not bow down. I like to read the first one. Exodus chapter 20. It's rather you serving the Lord or you ain't. You work, it's rather you worshiping the Lord or you ain't. You could be saved and yet not worshiping the Lord. For example, you could be like Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of the Lord who didn't want to go preach to the people. He ended up running away from God. <laughs> he was a dude that the fish swallowed up and ended up spitting out or whatever. You can be saved and be against God and be in rejection of God's word, you, but you're going to end up running away from him like Jonah did. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, uh, 
verse 4, the Lord said, You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. All right. Do you love or hate the Lord? Now, are you saved or not? Because if you love the Lord, you're going to keep his word. To hate the Lord, you're not going to... You could be saved, but you could not want to do what he wants asking you to do. <laughs> All right, hating what he wants you to do. <laughs> All right. When I say hate, I don't mean hate what... Ooh, I can't, I can't stand the Lord. No, I mean hating to do what he wants you to do, rejecting his word. Because <laughs> if, if you love the Lord, you're going to do what he asking you to do. Okay, it's rather you're doing what the world wants you to do or what the Lord wants you to do. It's one of the two. Or it's rather you're doing what you want to do or what the Lord wants you to do. Now, we, we all do both at the same time. But you're going to want to do one other more than the other, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, do you. Do you hate the Lord or do you love the Lord? Of course, most will say they do. Uh, mo of course, most people say they do. They love the Lord. Uh, and most would never say that they hate the Lord. Many claim to know God. Titus chapter 1, verse 16, Brother Paul said, They claim to know God, but by their actions they, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. You see? If you love the Lord, you are going to keep his word daily. You will wish to know his word daily. You want to know what the Lord got to say for you. He not no mute idol. God ain't no God who don't exist and don't speak. <laughs> he speak all the time, somehow, one way or another. <laughs> it's rather you want to hear what he's saying or you want to do what you want to do to get stuff out the way. <laughs> so thus blocking the word of God. If you love the Lord, you are going to keep his word daily. Ian, you ain't got to be in the Bible 24-7 because it be days when I don't even read and his word his, his word is a fire in your heart. <laughs> word up. Yeah, word. If it's in your heart, you ain't got to be a big reader. It's going gonna, gonna to be in your mind. <laughs> word. All right. If you love the Lord, you're going to keep his word daily. You will wish to know his word daily. That is how he reveals himself to us, through his word. Uh, it's possible you can be saved and know who Jesus Christ is. But your relationship can be damaged and out of line because you have rejected what you need daily to live. Matthew 4, verse 4, Lord Jesus said to say, Lord Jesus told Satan, it is written, man should not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of, the, of God. Amen. And if Satan can take the word away from you or get you out of line with the word, he got you right where he wants you to be at. I love what the prophet Muhammad said in his final sermon. He said, uh... He said, uh, Satan, the prophet Muhammad said, I, I got to roll down on my jaw. He said, Satan has given up all hope in conquering big areas in our life. Now he aiming at the small things. <laughs> Where the biggest thing that the Lord can, that he can take from a person, uh, the biggest thing that he can do to a person is, Get them to reject uh, Lord Jesus, like word. Get them from be saved. But if you if if you, if you're gonna be saved, the Lord know if you're gonna be saved or not. All right. So he can't snatch you out of God's hands. So the next best thing he could do is to clip your walk with the Lord, to damage your testimony, your walk, and your relationship with the Lord, so to make you ineffective, so you can't touch other people. Word, <laughs> word. That's the next best thing he can do to you, make you leave you miserable. You know what I mean? Once you save, you save. He can't take that way. You got to spite in heaven. <laughs> So the next smallest thing you could do is, if if I can't run America, I can't run America if I can't run Virginia. <laughs> I can't run Virginia if I can't run my house. I can't run my house if I can't run myself. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Word. If he put the small things from you, you'll never ever be able to do anything big. I'm talking to myself too. Word. That hit me just. That hit me too just now. Uh, if you love the Lord, you're gonna keep His word daily. Uh, you'll wish to know his word daily. That's how he reveals himself to us, through his word. It's possible you could be saved and know who Jesus Christ is, but your relationship can be damaged or out of line because you have rejected what you need daily to live. Matthew 4, verse 4, Lord Jesus told Satan, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Amen. God Almighty will bless you with the kingdom. What? But what is? But what? But what point... But what is the point of having a kingdom without the king? Amen. 
The king is Lord Jesus Christ himself, the living word of God. To reject God's word is to reject Jesus in a sense. A lot of people accept Jesus, but accept, but reject his word daily. <laughs> word. <laughs> word. A lot of people uh, accept Jesus, but reject his word daily. <laughs> it's people who are saved. I, I know personally they are saved. If they die today or tomorrow, they have a spot in heaven. I'm sure of this. I'm sure of this. Nevertheless, they are highly unaffected, disruptive, uh, uh, busy bodies. They are idle. They are, they are idle believers. Second Thessalonians chapter three. Yeah, it's people who say it's people who say they accept Jesus but reject His word daily. <laughs> it's impossible to, <clears throat> and it, it don't it don't go. Jesus Christ is the living word of God. You see what I'm saying? Like it, it they go hand in hand. He, <laughs> Jesus Christ is the word of God. To accept one and to reject the, the other is ludicrous. <laughs> word up, <laughs> and uh, word, I'm just saying <laughs> you need that daily. All right, uh, where I'm going? Second Thessalonians chapter three. Ain't nobody perfect. I ain't perfect, Neve. I'm just saying you need that daily. <clears throat> word, I don't care what you got going on. <laughs> word, ain't nowhere in the world you can take that away from. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter three, verse six. <clears throat> Brother Paul said. <clears throat> Brother Paul said, warning against idleness. Uh, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were, when we were with you. We did not eat anyone's uh, food without paying for it. <laughs> Most of us just want to use this and that. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. I'm telling you, man. Like, why? Listen, believers. <laughs> In the name, Paul said, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because uh, we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to intimidate, <clears throat> to imitate. For even when we for even when we were with you, we gave you this rule: the one who was unwilling to work shall not eat. Word up, <laughs> most because most people don't want to do nothing, man. They don't want to work at all. Don't I ain't talking about physical work. They just come around, sit around. Hey, how you doing? Look what you got in the house. This or that. And <laughs> word, y'all moms ain't good for nothing. Even when I go somewhere, I see somebody's house. Uh, if it, if it's messed up, I'm gonna try to clean up with something. And people or something, you not know, like my sister or something like where I come, you come over, you don't just sit. I'm telling you, be do something when you go into somebody's house. <laughs> like be constructive. Don't just go around and use people, see what you can get from people. Like damn, the heck wrong with people? I, I don't get it. But uh, they do it all the time though. These believers, <laughs> where even when even when. My, I got an aunt B. My aunt B like 70 or 80 years old. And she still go to work every day. <laughs> so I, I don't care for people for 40, 50 to plan and don't want to do nothing. That that word up. <laughs> word. I'm glad I'm glad there's still some older people out here who who not idle. Because that, that give me hope for real. <laughs> like where it give me hope. Because I see a lot of other people just be sitting around don't want to do nothing. Like they can't do nothing. <laughs> Even if it's telling somebody, teaching somebody something. Like y'all got something y'all can be doing. <laughs> they, they don't want to do nothing but sit around watch TV and... <laughs> Gossip all day. Go from store, go to the stores, and <laughs> mugs ain't worth nothing. <clears throat> I don't mean to say it like that, but it's the truth. Uh, we hear that some of you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. As for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Take special note of anyone who does not obey our teaching in this letter. Do not associate with them in order in order that they may feel ashamed. Yet, do not regard them as an enemy, but warn them as you would a fellow believer. <laughs> Amen. Alright. It is possible. It is, it is people who are saved indeed, yet their relationship with the Lord is off. They accept and believe in Jesus. They are saved, but they reject his word daily or feel like they have no need to read his word or even care or even cares if Jesus has anything to say. <laughs> Said to say, but true. <clears throat> uh, there's a whole lot of church people. They go to they, they, most most people who who put the show on. They just go to church on Sunday. 
That's the only time they talk about Jesus is on Sunday. It's seven days a week. <laughs> or is he just the God of Sunday? Uh, uh, it's people who are saved, yet their relationship with the Lord is off. They accept and believe in Jesus. They are saved, but they reject his word daily or feel like they have no need to read his word. That's how he speaks to us. Or even cares if Jesus have any, or even cares if Jesus has anything to say. Sad to say, but true. <clears throat> That's why their relationship with the Lord will be off. And 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 basically they just, they just wasting their time and living a really hard and they're gonna end up living a really hard life, not enjoying most of their walk with the Lord. Um, first Samuel chapter 15. <clears throat> Y'all bear with me. First Samuel chapter 15, verses 23, 22. Verses 22 through 23. Most people accept God, but they reject his word. It, it don't work. It'll never work. It go hand in hand. God, the God, the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, slash the word of God and the Holy Spirit, Go hand in hand. All, all they they go hand in hand. To reject one, to to accept one and reject the other is, is ludicrous. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm just saying. Listen. First uh, Samuel chapter fifteen verses twenty two through twenty three. Uh, Brother Samuel told King Saul, "Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams." For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. You see? Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. If I can get there. Hosea chapter 4. I always skip past this, right? Y'all bear with me. Still early. Right. Hosea chapter four, verse six. Uh, <laughs> bear with me. Uh, the Lord said, My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, the word, I, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law, <clears throat> because you have ignored the law, the law of the Lord of your God, His word, I will also ignore your children. Word, <laughs> word. They got the right God is to accept God and reject His word. It's not gonna go right with you. You need His word daily. <laughs> Most people accept God, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, yet don't they? They don't. They don't accept his word. Receive his word daily. What you need daily. That's how he speaks to you. <laughs> word, that's, that's, that's where you get everything you need from, the word. Word, Jesus said to say, man don't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. <laughs> you ain't even getting your word. You don't, you don't get the word you don't care about or don't feel like it ain't no need for it. Word, it, that's how he clip you at your feet. You see? First uh, Corinthians chapter 1, <clears throat> he said, because you have rejected knowledge, I also have rejected you as my priest. Okay? The knowledge is found in the word. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Y'all oh, bear with me still early. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Brother Paul said, It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Amen. Uh, Colossians 2. Verses 1 through 3. Y'all bear with me. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 1 through 3. Uh, no, come on. Where in the world did I have that jump from? Oh, y'all bear with me on this. Oh, no. no I, I'm in the right spot. <laughs> yeah. Colossians chapter 2, verses 1, th one uh, through 3. Brother Paul said, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you uh, and for those that uh, Laodicea 
and for all those and for all who have not met me personally my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may, may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, <clears throat> in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Um, where? I like that. I like that. First uh, Samuel chapter 3. <clears throat> Y'all bear with me. First Samuel chapter 3. As you can see, I'm not super organized. First Samuel chapter three, verse twenty-one, uh, say, "The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there He revealed Himself to Samuel through His Word." That's how God speaks to you through through His Word. All right, <clears throat> you can have the Lord Jesus and be saved, and yet when you reject His Word daily, you, He ain't gonna you don't get nothing out of nothing. A lot of people, <clears throat> a lot of people are happy with being saved. Okay. They do, they do indeed know who Jesus is. They do believe in him, but somehow or another, uh, they don't have a desire for his word, and so denying him in some degree, and so they, and so denying him to some degree, word. <clears throat> uh, Lord Jesus is supposed to be king, king over your life somehow, some way, uh, word. And somehow, some way, he's supposed to be king over your life. You know, you know him like word. Uh, but anyway, let me, let me. most are unaware. Most, yeah, most are unaware that they are doing that. Some are just hypocrites. They know they are being ignorant. Others simply just don't care. Matthew thirteen verses one through twenty-three. <clears throat> Matthew thirteen. Y'all bear with me. Matthew thirteen <clears throat> verses one through twenty-three. Uh, Lord Jesus told a prayer up. He said, that same, uh, th that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large, cra such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while he and all the people stood on the shore. <clears throat> um, he, told him, he told him many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. <clears throat> As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds of the air, and the birds of the air came and ate, and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was set, was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. <clears throat> the disciples came to him and asked him, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. That is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I will heal them. <laughs> But blessed are your eyes, but blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. But truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people learned long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sword means. <clears throat> when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This seed is this is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling 
among the thorn refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Amen. Word. The Bible say in Psalm 30, uh, the Bible say in Psalms 37 verse 4, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. How can you take delight in the Lord without knowing what he said or what he said or said to take delight in? <laughs> Where? The Bible say take delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. How can you take delight in the Lord without knowing what he said or said to take delight in? Uh, Psalms 119 Verses 47 through 48 say, I delight in your commands because, because I love them. I reach out for your commands, your word, which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. Amen. Psalms, uh, Jeremiah 15, verse 16, Brother Jeremiah said, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. <clears throat> and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. Psalms 119, 105 say, your word is a lamp. You can't see where you're going without God's word. <laughs> word up. Uh, Romans 12, verses 1 through, two, uh, one, one through 3 uh, say, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. You can't do that, you can't do that without getting in his word. <laughs> you can't. You can't you can't transform your mind without the word. The word converts your mind. <laughs> All things made by God's word. Even if if the Lord Jesus was to fix me up right now and 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 word and make make stuff go right, I'm still gonna need His word daily for direction. Or do I got it all myself? All right. <clears throat> Jesus and the word of God go hand in hand. <laughs> to accept one to accept one and reject the other is ludicrous. Alright. Alright, bless y'all. Ready to get that out the way. That junk was on me to write, uh, read that junk. I wrote that junk yesterday. That junk called, Do You Love the Lord or, or Hate the Lord? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll pick up where I left off. Uh, I'm in Ephesians. Uh... Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, yeah. And God bless you. And God bless you. The best time you can spend time in God's word, man. Be the best thing you ever did. Just like opting the shower. A lot of people clean up the outside, but it's the inside that's more. That, that needs the cleaning. But anyway. Uh, especially mine, each and every single time, every day, I open these eyes. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, uh, God's marvelous plan for the Gentiles. What the title say? <clears throat> God's marvelous plan for the Gentiles. Uh, Brother Paul said, For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely, you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation. As I have already written briefly in reading this, then you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the which was not made known to people in order in order uh, in other generations, as it has been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles, I like them, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has been revealed by the Spirit by the Spirit to God by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and, pro and prophets. The mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel. Members together of one body and shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Amen. I became a servant of this gospel by, by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I'm less, although I'm less than the least of all the Lord's people, 
this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make and to make plain to everyone the administration the um, the administration of the mystery of this mystery which for ages which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things his intent was was that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in him and through in him and through faith in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence amen I ask you I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you which are your glory amen a prayer for the Ephesians with the title said a prayer for the Ephesians for this reason I kneel before for this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love and to know that and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen unity I like that unity Unity and maturity in the body of Christ. With the title said, <clears throat> "Unity and maturity in the body of Christ." Uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse one. Uh, Brother Paul said, "As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient." bearing with one another in love make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who was over all and through all and in all but to each one of us grace has been given as christ apportioned it that is why it says when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to, to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the Lord? Earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens. In order to fill the whole in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ gave himself. So Christ get so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the, te the teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith, until we until we all reach unity in the faith and the and the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Uh, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Amen. From him the whole body joined from from him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Amen. Right. You got to stay in him. <clears throat> he says, from him, from him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love. Most people ain't got too much love in their heart. No word. We be jealous and be all type of stuff. <laughs> Must be wild. 
if you stay grow, if you stay centered in God's word, God's word is active and alive, man. <laughs> it will do something to you. Where right. <laughs> it's different from this ain't no. You can put on a show yourself and act like ain't nothing hard and come around and, <laughs> and act like you love people. It's, it's not gonna work. <laughs> act like you care for people. It's not gonna work. <laughs> you gonna do it the wrong way. This and that. It's not gonna work. You need to stay where. You can try to do it, but you need to stay centered and you need to, Jesus said, if you remain in me and I in you, how you remain in Jesus to remain in his word, <laughs> word, word, right. all right, let me keep going, all right, uh, all right, uh, instructions, instructions for Christian living, what the title said, <clears throat> so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord. That you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Yep. Having lost all sensitivity, they have they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with, re you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Amen. <laughs> I still got I still got mad problems. <laughs> <Word. laughs> I see you up here every day, bro. You ain't like got no problems. I still got mad problems. <laughs> Word. I got... I got I got an ace of spade and four, five, six on my arm. <laughs> Some dice. <laughs> I'm a gambling dude. <laughs> Word up. Um, um, I got a mad problem. <laughs> what a, <laughs> I was about to sing that, sing that Jay-Z song. Um, uh, <laughs> um, but anyway. <laughs> what a... I love the word. Uh, hold on, y'all bear with me. I don't know why I couldn't spell this morning. <laughs> yeah, I got many problems, many troubles. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I don't see you with no troubles, no problems, man. You don't know me. Psalms 34, verse 19 say the righteous person have many troubles, <laughs> but the Lord delivers him from the all. Amen. I love that. I love that. Hey, I love it. Yeah. Before I go there. Oh, yeah. Paul said, You will talk with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Amen. I still got. Sexual urge and stuff too. And little stuff like people, just like the rest of y'all. I used to be a wild dude. I thought they used to keep like 10, like seven girlfriends at one time. I was tripping. <laughs> just having one junk is, is like work. <laughs> just having one junk is pretty good uh, for me nowadays. It's hard. And even with that, people still, <laughs> still be looking at certain stuff. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just speaking the truth. Y'all ain't got to, but I will. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, man, ain't nobody perfect. Uh, you still have these problems somehow, some way. To the day you die, to the day you die. Right. Uh, you will talk with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Therefore, <clears throat> each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor for we are all members of one body and your anger do not sin i love that people act like you ain't got a reason to be mad sometimes sometimes you do got even the bible say be angry but don't sin in your anger in your anger do not sin and sometimes it's, you got reason to be bad and upset if people come around doing dumb stuff throwing me off come around every day like even in the bible say if, if you see somebody in need and if you see somebody Give it to me, Lord. I'm, I don't need. I don't need the junk. It's in James, I think. Is it in James? I think it's in James. Bear with me. 
I think I, I don't want to use my turn. I'm gonna use, need to use my phone. <laughs> I'll be hating to use my phone, man. Give me a second. I'm way up. Let me think. I'm way up. First John chapter three. I want super. I want First John chapter three. First John chapter three verse eleven, uh, brother John said, "For this is the message you heard from the beginning: We should love one another. Uh, do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil, and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters. If the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death." And anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. As you know, that, that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid his life down for us, and we ought to, do the, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees, <laughs> sees, not cold, go, ain't, ain't nobody got to go beg you and ask you this and that. Because anytime I ever looked up with somebody, ain't nobody got to beg and ask me anything. Why I'm then why no I gotta ask me. I see you I see what you need, bro. <laughs> why it's very clear, I gotta ask. I see what you need. <laughs> why if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother and sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? <laughs> why must it come around? Dear dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. <laughs> why must come around, no you need this and that or messed up or whatever to speak. Why why even go there? Why do I even go there? Oh, um, uh, to be angry but don't sin. Oh yeah, it's reason to be mad and upset. Monster do stuff throw you up. <laughs> Why up? You could be messed up and uh, hurt and monster treat you a certain way and <laughs> this and that and think you ain't got right to be mad, man. Y'all better get away from me with that stuff. <laughs> Why? Better be lucky I ain't like James and John. I can't. Throw down, cat, call down fire from heaven on y'all. <laughs> Lord, you want me to get him out the way? Nah, <laughs> I'm just playing. But anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I like to say be angry but don't sin. Y'all got to bear with me. <laughs> uh, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Um, and do not give the devil a, a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work. <clears throat> Doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those who, with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Amen. Word up, I love that. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness. <laughs> Word up. A lot of people blame their stuff on you. They bitter they dang so. Word. You know, I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. The the, the person who always accused me and pointing a finger and saying this and that, I, I love, I, man, I'm telling you, I ain't never realized that until like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Word. The person who always pointing a finger and, and accusing stuff, 9 10 out of 10, they the one who was the real problem. You see what I'm saying? They, they put it on you. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Must be tripping. Word. Must be thinking you got a problem at all the time. Deep down, they the one with the problem. <laughs> Word. Word. Must be tripping. But anyway, don't let any, uh, uh, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed um, for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander. Along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as 
just as in Christ God forgave you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Brother Paul said, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. But among you, uh, but among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of greed or, or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Word up. I got her from this every day. <laughs> not even a hint. Get less and less every day. Every day. You learn something. Even still, you're going to do something for the day you die. <laughs> And it, it drunk cut me because uh, it hit me every because I know every day. Not even a hint. <laughs> it's impossible to be perfect. This and that. Like it keep you out of. It, it, it make you think. But among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immoral immorality. Anything that got to do with sex outside of marriage, <laughs> or any kind of impurity, anything polluting your body, like anything impure, anything that pollutes yourself, or or greed. We all got some type of greed because these are improper, especially I do. <laughs> you got to get this, got to get that. I could sit right here all day and say I'm hard or whatever. <laughs> I still got to do, I still got my own little job I got to get. <laughs> like, where? I don't like to go overboard. But truth is the truth. Like, right. I can get greedy at times. <laughs> That's why I might go grab some dice. <laughs> Mark, they tattooed on my arm. <laughs> I'm still me. I'm just saying. Might lose, might win. Don't know. Uh, <laughs> I ain't messing with y'all. Still, I got to throw that out there. That I am who I am. Because these are improper for God's holy people. And I know this to be true. Nor should there be obs obscenity, foolish talk, or, cor or coarse joking. Amen. Which are out of place. Amen. But rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure. No Im immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolatry, idolatry, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of, because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not partner with them. For you once were darkness, but now you are, but for you once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of, of light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Amen. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deed of darkness, but rather expose them. It is, <clears throat> it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, it is. It is shameful to mention eat. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Yes, it is. Speaking by myself, too. Word up. It's rather you being obedient to the Lord or disobedient. <laughs> One way or another. Word. If you're telling the truth, it's rather you being obedient to something or disobedient to something. <laughs> it's shameful to even mention what the disobedient do in secret. Amen. It's absolutely true. But everything... But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Amen. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. But understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in songs, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Singing, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name in the, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, instructions for Christian households. Instructions. For Christian households. <laughs> submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. Amen. His body of which he is the Savior. 
Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also why so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Amen. And to present her to her and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this way, husbands ought to, ought to in this way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one has ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does for the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a prof this is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you, uh, however, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Amen. Ephesians chapter six, uh, verse one. Brother Paul said, "Children." Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers or mothers, do not exasperate your children. What that mean? <laughs> exasperate. I know what it means, but I like one reason I like these dang phones. Intensely irritate and frustrate. <laughs> uh, yeah, they y'all can write that down. <laughs> Fathers slash or mothers, do not exasperate your children. Intensely irritate and frustrate. <laughs> uh, word. It means to anger, to mad, and irritate, annoy, inflame, uh, to enrage. Get on someone's nerves. <laughs> Make someone's blood boil. Uh, get someone's back up. Ruffle someone's feather. Drive to distraction. Woo! I, I'm going to write this down. Yeah, I'm going to hang this on the door. Y'all think I'm joking. <laughs> Word up. Because mine's be plucking sometimes. Word. They know it too. Y'all think I'm tripping. I ain't tripping. Y'all can clap if y'all want to. Must be plucking. I love my family, this and that, whatever. Man. <laughs> word up. Hey, the word go for me too. As well as I told y'all, I learn as much as I'm to teach y'all. I apply everything, each and every single thing. Rather, if I'm on here or not, it's still, before I even get on here, before I ever was on here, this is what I do in my private time, in my personal time. <laughs> like, word. Word. Uh, I don't need nobody to get in the word with. It's good if you got somebody with you, but I don't need nobody to encourage me to learn right now. This is what I love to do. I'm like, where I love, I love, where I love to spend time with the Lord. Spend time with him by spending time in his word. Right. Oh, yeah. Fathers do not exasperate your church. But no, <laughs> I can't get off of that. To get on someone's nerves, to make someone's blood boy, to get at. Get someone's goat, rattle someone's cage, wind up. That's what all, that's what the word means. Okay. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Amen. Where right, parents got a job, <laughs> the parents got a job to teach the children. If you don't teach your children, somebody else going to, and that's most people's problem now. They they leave their problems on other people. <laughs> like where and they happy with it like that. They happy with other people doing stuff for them. I don't get that. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Amen. Obey them not only to win their favor, win their eyes on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Amen. We all slaves and servants to somebody, somehow, some way. It's whether you at a job, work, or whatever. Your boss is, <laughs> the boss is, that's your boss. You might be a good boss, a bad boss. I had people I worked for. I ain't was too fond of. You know what I mean? Much. Wow. But even through that, still got to respect them somehow, some way. And 
through the problem, still trying to work something out. Because like, even if I don't like the way they're doing something, I still I understand they the ones running that. They the ones in control of that. It's not my business. You see what I'm saying? Hmm. Rather I like it or not. You know what I mean? I'm there to work. You see what I'm saying? I might not like it, but I got to respect it. And truly, uh, and truly, if you do if you do do things a certain way, even the people would notice like some up with this person, <laughs> where because they different, like where like they, even if they unappreciated, like they they can't might they can't express themselves. But some people are different, and uh, let me just keep reading. Uh, obey them not only to win their favor, win their eyes on you, but as slaves for Christ. Doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do. <clears throat> whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. Uh, and there is no favoritism with him. Amen. The arm of God, what the title say? Brother Paul said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in, his, and in his mighty power. Put on the full arm of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Word up. If you don't know Satan against you and he got and he, and he, and he, and he slick, <laughs> word up. Satan, the world, and sin is against you each and every single day. And they operate through the people, through the world. <laughs> Well, he worked through whatever they can work through. He, he'll use regular worldly people. He can even, if he, if he can, affect the church people. He can't possess the church people, but he can affect them. <laughs> and, word. And, hmm. But anyway, you want to be on point. Because <laughs> most of the time, it, it, people think it's people tripping. I'm talking to myself, too, because it, it, it like, word, <laughs> word. It ain't people tripping. Sometimes I already know it is behind the people, mess, messing with people sometimes. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full arm of God so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, you see. In addition to all this, take up the shield of take up uh the shield of faith with with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, uh, uh, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me <clears throat> that whenever I speak, words may be given so I will fear so so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. <laughs> Pray that I may declare fierce. Pray that I may declare it fiercely, fearlessly as I should. Amen. <laughs> I love Paul. Final greetings. Uh, Ty, Ty, you butcher my name, bro. Tychesis, <laughs> Tychesis, Ty, Ty, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Ty, Chasis. Uh, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord will tell you everything so that you will also so that you also may know how I am and what I'm doing. I'm sending him to you. This, I'm sending him to you for this very purpose that you may know how we are and that you may and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with and love with faith from God, the father and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an ungod with an un with an undying love. I love that. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. I love that. God bless y'all.
Hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. Best time you can spend time in God's word, man. Best time you can spend. You're never going to get step two till you take step one. Um, where I think, yeah, that's what Pastor Troy say. The best time you can spend is time in God's word. I love that word, amen. Y'all keep asking the Lord for the Holy Spirit. He's going to give it to you. Uh, word. You keep on praying. Don't stop. Uh, if he ain't gave it to you yet, yeah, keep on asking. He's going to give it to you. It's the Holy Spirit leading you to Lord Jesus now. Lord Jesus is going to take you on to heaven one day to be with our Father. God bless y'all.